Hey class, I uh, just wanted to take a quick moment to answer a question that I've been getting uh, from several of you guys. Uh, it's a common question, and it has to do with arrays, since we've been talking about arrays the last few weeks. And in short, the question is, how can I get user input and use the input from my user to generate an array? And in all honesty, there are lots of ways to do it. I've heard some great uh, discussions and some options out there. Uh, involving prompts and asking for the end user to specify how big they want the array and then using that number to create a loop that then continues to prompt the end user to collect numbers until that number is hit and save that into array that's a great one there's lots of different ways I've seen people doing it with the HTML where they've did a similar way but they've used the number that the user input to generate a uh, HTML that has that many input boxes and then you can user can fill out the input boxes and hit you know, uh, submit, and that would then trigger code that collects all the data out of the input box and save those into an array. Uh, you'd use loops to do that. So usually a lot of loops, basically. And those are great and fun and great exercises to understand how arrays work and how to get end user. But really the simplest way to generate an array from end user data is to ask them to give it to you in a specific format that you can then convert easily into an array. And the best way to do that is with a split function, right? Or the split method, which is attached to a string. Uh, the string is a type of object, we've learned about objects a little bit, that has various methods available to them to manipulate those strings. And one of them is the split method. And it's pretty basic, right? You'll notice here on W3Schools page that you basically pass into the split function a character. And the split function uses that character as the separation point. So you'll notice here you're passing in this string, how are you doing today? You're t using the split, com the split method and telling it to use the spaces as the delimiter. That's the fancy word for the separator, right? Use a space as a delimiter. And then at every space, separate that out into a new uh, address or a new index in my array. So when you run this command, Right here, you end up with an, an array called res that looks like this, right? The commas are showing the different um, uh, the different indexes, if you will. And so you've got index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I hit res 0, I'd get how. If I hit res 2, I'd get uh, u, right, and 3 and 4 and vice versa. So it basically converts that. And in order to talk a little bit further, the a format that is commonly used uh, to separate stuff is something called a comma separated value or a CSV. Some of you guys may have come across these in your adventures in computing where you've downloaded data from somewhere, somebody shared some some data with you and it came to you in a file format called the .csv. Usually Excel is the program that you've got that can open up that file and it puts it into a spreadsheet. But it's basically just a string of values separated by commas. And we can use the split function and instead of telling it to separate on spaces, we can tell it to separate using commas. And then we can ask our end users to provide us a comma separated list of numbers. And once they do that, we can split that into an array. And I've wrote a, a quick program that we can kind of look at to, to see this in action and to talk about various ramifications of using this uh, method, this string method. Uh, my program is pretty basic. I've got a, an input box, a button, and a div. My input box is called user CSV short for comma separated value. Um, my on click calls a function up here called do something. And of course, first thing I'm doing is grabbing whatever my end user puts in here uh, and saving it into a value or variable called CSV. Now I've also created a little label up here that gives my users some instruction saying, hey, put in your numbers separated by a comma. And then I show them an example of what that looks like. And uh, it's pretty simplistic to this point. So. Beyond that, what I've done is I've, I've, wrote, I've written uh, two functions, one called process array string and one cause called process array float. They both take one parameter, right? That parameter is a string. So I just named the parameter some string because, you know, somebody's going to pass in some string to me. And then inside my function, uh, the basic one, it, the process array string, uh, all I'm doing is I'm creating a variable called split string, and I'm calling the split method on that string, on, excuse me, the string that was passed in, and telling that split function to use the comma as the separator. 
And then what happens is split string is going to get saved an array of all of the various components passed in, separated by uh, commas, and then I'm just going to return that. Um, now, many of the programs that we've been writing in the last few weeks require our arrays to be numbers in order to properly process them, right? The add ends and the get middle and all those, uh, we do math on those. And so in order for that to work, we need these to be numbers and not strings. Because remember, by default, uh, the user, the, the input you get from an input box is a string, right? That's why we were able to accept them here as strings and why we're able to do the split. But we kind of want to write a function that takes that and then converts it into a number so that I can take that user and then use it and pass it into a function similar to like we did uh, last week and like we're doing this week. Um, so let's see, where am I going with this? Oh, <laughs> so let's just talk a little bit about the array float one. So I've created another function called process array float, right? And once again, passed in the same sum string, which is coming in my, my CSV file, same thing creating a variable, running the split command on the string that came in. But this time I've got a for each loop that I've written that's going to loop through this array that I've created called split float, right? And each time it's overriding the original value with the parsed version of that value, right? So I've got split, if I've got the, the first iteration is going to be zero. And so it's going to say split float, split float zero, which is a string, is going to be equal to split float zero with the parse float wrapped around it, right? And then I'll return that back. So real quick, I'll just show you the code in action. We'll look at um, the debugger, just kind of see what's going on. I'm going to put in just some numbers in here. And we'll jump in here and notice that. I've got my breakpoint here after my I've created this CSV variable, which has got my string that I've entered in. Notice it's just one single big string. And if I step over this one, the first thing I get back is string version, right? With an array of values chopped into it, if you will, that represent the same string that I had up above, right? Um, and then if I do the next one, I get the exact same array only this time they're numbers. Notice these ones have quotes, these ones do not. And then I've got basically my values there. Now just to look one more time, let's jump into the uh, this one here. So you'll notice that my string comes in as a string, right? Um, when I create my array, the array that is created is identical to the other one, right? It's just a string array of the, the same values in string format. But then as I jump into my uh, array, watch this. Notice that my split float is that as I step through each loop, right? Each time I step through the loop, the number gets converted. Right? There they are. And then they're all converted. The function ends and returns that updated version to the program, and that gets saved out. So that's kind of a, a brief introduction to the split command. I hope that's useful and answers some of your question about how you can uh, simply, uh, in a very simple fashion, grab input from an end user and convert that into an array for whatever purpose that you want. And uh, good luck with this week's code, and we will see each other in Office.